we've been looking at the Salem witch trials. Hopefully, as we've gone along, you've been able to uh, look at the content of, of what occurred, the historical evidence, uh, the uh, uh, firsthand experiences of those that were there, and what they wrote about, what they saw. Uh, the next thing for us to consider is who were those that were condemned. There were uh, 19 people that died that were executed as a result of what took place during these trials. And I want us to look at them. Tragic that these people, um, most of them, maybe all of them were innocent of the charges, and yet because of the reliance on uh, the testimony of a witch, admitted which uh, spectral evidence uh, that you believe the spirits what they were saying uh, and that the girls could not have brought this upon themselves led to some very unfortunate results all right so on, i'm going to read that through the uh, different people uh, just so that it's kind of a roll call of those that died uh, june 10th bridget bishop of salem was put to death uh, more than a month later, July 19th, Sarah Good from Salem Village was put to death, as was Rebecca Nurse from Salem Village. Uh, Rebecca Nurse was 71 years old and well-respected. She said this, What sin hath God found out in me, unrepented of, that he should lay such an affliction upon me in my old age? Susanna Martin from Amesbury, Elizabeth Howe from Ipswich, and Sarah Wiles from Topsfield. So there were five of them that were hung on that day. By the way, I don't know if we've mentioned this before or not, but uh, witches were not burned at the stake, they were hung. That's a, a common misconception about Salem and, and just in general. Uh, a month later, August 19th, uh, George Burrow from Wells, Maine. Uh, he was a former minister in Salem. Uh, he came back and uh, they accused him of being a witch. Uh, this is a, <coughs> a, a painting drawing of his trial. Uh, they buried him for some reason in so shallow a grave. Uh, for some reason they were in a hurry with him and uh, his hand was still uncovered. Uh, he gave a speech and prayer before his execution, which caused many to think about what was occurring, begin to question what was going on. That same day, uh, John Proctor from Salem Village, John Willard, Salem Village, George Jacobs from Salem, and Martha Carrier from Andover. A month later, September 19th, Giles Corey of Salem Farms who was 81, was not hung because he refused to confess. He was pressed to death. He would not say anything, and so they, uh, in order to get something out of him, they laid him down and put rocks on top of his body uh, to get him, you know, this form of torture, to get him to say something. And all he would say is, more weight. Until finally, the weight of the rocks Press the life out of him. It took two days. He apparently did believe, although he refused to say anything about himself because he didn't want to be condemned because that would mean, uh, I think it was loss of property possibly for his uh, family, for his children. Uh, even though he would be, if he confessed, he would be uh, non executed. Um, so, but he obviously didn't think that he was a witch. Uh, but he did have questions about his wife. Wasn't quite so sure that she wasn't a witch. Yeah, Devin. What is the difference between Salem and Salem Village? Uh, I knew somebody was going to ask that, and I'm not sure that I know, except that, uh, like we have uh, in Poland, there's Poland and Poland Township, so I'm not sure whether the village refers to the actual <coughs> limit, and then Salem refers to the whole area, possibly. I really don't know the answer to that for sure. Uh, September 21st, a couple days later, uh, there was, you know, after all these people were killed, somebody confesses. Yeah, okay, don't kill me, I'm a witch. Uh, and that's Dorcas Hoare. 
September 22nd, Martha Corey, Giles' wife, was hung. Uh, Mary Easty from Topsfield was executed. Uh, she wrote a letter before she was executed. Yes? Um, isn't it like Martha's funeral? Yeah. Like, Easty can pass, he was hung. So, like, Martha. No, 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 no. Uh, the. Uh, on uh, September 21st, there, she was not hung because she confessed. All right, I want to read to you the letter from Mary Easty. It goes like this. The humble petition of Mary Easty unto His Excellency Sir William Phipps and to the honored judge and bench now sitting in judicature in Salem and the reverend ministers humbly showeth that whereas your poor and humble petitioner being condemned to die, do humbly beg of you to take it in your judicious and pious consideration that your poor and humble petitioner, knowing my own innocency, blessed be the Lord for it, and seeing plainly the wiles and subtlety of my accusers by myself, cannot but judge charitably of others that are going the same way of myself if the Lord steps not mightily in. Okay, what is she saying? Anybody understand what she was saying? She's saying, I'm condemned to die for being a witch. And I know I'm innocent. And I'm not pleading for myself. But if I know I'm innocent, I think there are others that are being uh, accused that are probably innocent too. And I humbly beg for you, of you to examine what is really going on here. She continues. I was confined a whole month upon the same account that I am condemned now for, and then cleared by the afflicted persons, as some of your honors know. And in two days' time, I was cried out upon them, and have been confined, and now am condemned to die. So she said, oh, I was in prison once for it, and then the girls cleared me of it, and now I'm back again, and now I'm condemned. So how could I have been a witch, not a witch, and now a witch again? How is that possible? <laughs> the Lord above knows my innocency then, and likewise does now, as at the great day will be known to men and angels. I petition to your honors, not for my own life, for I know I must die, and my appointed time is set. But the Lord, he knows it is, that if it be possible, no more innocent blood may be shed which undoubtedly cannot be avoided in the way and course you go in. I question not but your honors do to the utmost of your powers in the discovery and detecting of witchcraft and witches, and would not be guilty of innocent blood for the world. But by my own innocency, I know you are in the wrong way. The Lord, in his infinite mercy, direct you in this great work, if it be his blessed will, that no more innocent blood be shed. I would humbly beg of you that your honors would be pleased to examine these afflicted persons strictly and keep them apart some time, and likewise to try some of these confessing witches. I being confident there is several of them has belied themselves and others as will appear, if not in this world, I am sure in the world to come, whither I am now a going. In other words, she says there are some people who are confessing to be witches that aren't witches either if you really examine I question not, but you will see an alteration of these things. They say myself and others, having made a league with the devil, we cannot confess. I know, and the Lord knows, as will appear, they belie me, and so I question not, but they do others. The Lord above, who is the searcher of all hearts, knows, as I shall answer it at the tribunal seat, that I know not the least thing of witchcraft. Therefore I cannot, I dare not, belie my own soul. I beg your honors not to deny this, my humble petition, from a poor, innocent person. And I question not, but the Lord will give a blessing to your endeavors. Now what effect do you think that letter had upon those that were trying these cases? What effect would it have had upon you? Or what was 
was your perception of what she said in her letter? Pretty accurate. And she knows what she's talking about. Yeah. Does, does she sound like a, a spiritually minded person? Does she sound like she has, oh, as Joey said, she's pretty accurate about what's happening. But initially, at least, it didn't seem to have any effect at all. They continued with her execution and others. All right, so that's Mary Easty. Uh, that same day, Alice Parker of Salem, Ann Bud Eater of Salem, Margaret Scott of Raleigh, Wilmot Red of Marblehead, and Samuel Wardwell of Andover. That was September 22nd. Oh, and Mary Parker of Andover. Interestingly, that night of September 21st, when so many of these, I think it was all women, wasn't it? Oh, no, it was... Uh, one or two men there. Uh, the night that they were all hung, there was a hard, hard rain. It's almost as if God was trying to wash away their their blood, not literally, but by their death. By September 22nd, the last of the victims perished, and the thrust of witchery had increased Mather Remember, he had been away in England. He came back, and he protested the loose rule for admitting evidence. Now he says, you guys are taking evidence from whatever. You're not even examining from where the evidence is coming. Uh, and in fact, what is the biblical rule for evidence? What does the Old Testament teach us about what kind of evidence we receive? Two witnesses. You need two or three witnesses. Did they have that? No. They were believing whatever some spirit, some demonic spirit was telling them. Or telling the girls. And believing that as enough to condemn someone to death. Well, Mather convinced Governor Phipps to change the court's rule of evidence. Now, there might have been something that played into the government's, the governor's willingness to listen to Mather and to change the direction. You know what that was? His wife was accused of being a witch. Suddenly, the light came on, and he decided, okay, this is not good. Uh, Cotton Mather, who is Increase's son, suggested with others that, quote, Witches might be better treated by prayer and fasting than by legal action and punishment. They believed that the trials were becoming centered on vengeance rather than on God's will. Quote. After this, after this change in the evidence, uh, the, this change in uh, perspective brought about by increase in Cotton Mather, there were no more convictions for witchcraft. Both Judge Sewell and John Hale feared that innocent blood was shed. They finally came to their senses. And the jurors and Ann Putnam felt that Satan had deluded them. Let's move to an evaluation. Of the witch trials. And for this, I want you to consider the different perspectives that we gave you at the beginning. What are the different explanations for what occurred, for the causes of the witch trials? And I want you to uh, write uh, a short essay, maybe a page, uh, outlining what you think was the cause. Was it one of the natural causes? Was it supernatural? What was the cause or causes of what occurred there and why you think that that is the case? Okay, so I'm going to give you the rest of the time to uh, think about that and work on that. All right, what is your opinion, your perspective on why this occurred and why do you think so? Any questions? Kayla.
Um, either one's fine, but I'm giving you time to do it now. If you want to run down to get a Chromebook, you would probably do it right. Or if you want to jot down some ideas and then type it later, that would be fine too.